the least most test of the power of this generation it's not revealed in our ability to cast out devils and our ability to prophesy and our ability to work miracles it is tested by our ability to live a sinless life it is in the place of sinlessness that power is revealed the bible says sin will no more have dominion over you because you are not under the law but under grace so the dominion of this life is revealed through the temptations of sin in our daily walk with god we have a church that only sing about the victories that jesus had on the cross but genuinely when we are we will be honest to our own selves we realize that we don't really have victory for ourselves through the daily walk that we have on earth something is responsible let us not sweep it under the carpet something is responsible the ministry of jesus on the cross did two powerful things number one is sought for our forgiveness before the lord number two it destroyed the one that had power in sin and used sin against the world that is satan so jesus destroyed satan on the cross and sought for the forgiveness of our sins but there is something the sacrifice of jesus didn't do the bible calls our body the body of sin the sacrifice of jesus did not destroy the body of sin it did not destroy your desire that is why you can be born again but still feel like masturbating still feel like fornicating still feel like fighting still have jealousy the, the sacrifice of Jesus did not necessarily destroy the body of sin so the body of sin is intact but it is the prince of sin that was destroyed it is the forgiveness of sin that you received but the sacrifice of Jesus opened us up to the inner court and the glorious place where we have an experience with the Holy Spirit he gave us the Holy Spirit for one major assignment that is to work on the body of sin. The victory of Jesus 2021 years ago saved you. But the effect of it in your life is what may save a sinner. You cannot force a sinner to believe what Jesus has done. But the effect in your life can force him to believe. That is why Jesus didn't say keep carrying my cross. He said deny yourself, carry your own cross. There is a cross that you will bear and the produce of the power, the effect of that cross is what will guarantee you the opportunity to help save another soul. And that power and that victory is revealed in a certain ministry of the Holy Spirit that in our day, it is not preached, it is not taught. And that is the ministry of genuine repentance. Jesus came on earth and began his ministry. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. The problem is not the kingdom. I will die. And I will establish the kingdom. And that kingdom is not Kaswa. That kingdom is not Ghana. That kingdom is not America. When you get the opportunity to travel to UK, you are not experiencing the glory of the kingdom because that kingdom is not a physical territory. That kingdom is a certain divine influence that comes upon a human life. And that life begins to live heaven on earth. So that kingdom is not seen in a, a physical territory as though I go to this place and that is the place the kingdom is. No. It is a certain divine influence that must come upon human beings that you walk on earth yet you are not subject to the naturality of life but there is another power a stream of life that flows through you that is the kingdom and he said that this kingdom must come 
it must come the day jesus shouted it is finished that was the day the portals of heaven was opened and that kingdom descended but there is a need to access that kingdom there is a way to access that kingdom and that way is the way of repentance what are you ready to fix your mind on the key to assessing this influence of heaven is revealed through our minds revivals are dead because we didn't understand these mysteries the move of the spirit began for a time and for a moment and it changed because we didn't understand this mystery no one taught us that there is a place to sustain the influence of God in a person's life and that is constant renewal the Bible says be ye transformed by the renewing of our minds there is no transformation if we don't come to the place of genuine repentance we may accept who you are but God will not until your mind is changed the power of God is so detailed the influence of God in a man's life is so detailed you see we live in a world that we want everybody to tolerate us we want everybody to understand us but there is a God who does not lower himself he rather pulls us up to his standard so when he came on earth he began to preach repentance before the kingdom repent before the kingdom comes repent before the kingdom comes because an unrepented heart and mind cannot enjoy the glory of this kingdom and then he gave us his spirit i'm going to show you how god gives people up when we say god has given up on you no god does not give up on you the time problems start coming no there are three processes through which god causes repentance the first process is the voice of a spirit in your heart a convicting voice that keeps speaking to you that keeps speaking to you it's a convicting voice and the second process and that voice is louder per the day so you begin by having this strong sorrow in your heart when something is going wrong with your life and you know that you are in a particular sin and then the voice begins it begins with a certain level of sorrow deep in your heart then a veil begins to cover that voice suddenly the sorrow goes down and the voice becomes lighter at a point in time the voice goes off and then God introduces you to the second process of bringing you into repentance when his voice is not able to handle you he gives you to friends and pastors and people and when friends and pastors and loved ones cannot handle you anymore when you get to the place where God gives you up to friends and human beings per se if you get to that place that means that your spirit is almost dumb and deaf it can't hear God again so God wants to appeal to your soul then he brings you to audible voices that you can hear so he begins to speak into your spirit that's that voice is not an audible voice that the physical ear here it is only your spirit that hears but when you get to the point of almost deaf in the spirit that you can't hear his voice then he gives you up to audible voices and then audible voices keep speaking to you every day you come to church we preach to you you cry a little you go back and remain the same 
and friends keep testing you i had a dream about you you were that and you were that and you were this and that and that and then they keep appealing to your soul that maybe some way somehow god will keep visiting people and talking to you until something happens to your soul if you resist it then god begins to communicate to your body and the only means to the communication of your body it's not worse body don't respond to worse it responds to problems then god goes ahead to begin to communicate to your flesh that is where strange things happen to you it is in the place where you end up in a prison and that is where you begin to realize that i have made a mistake i should have changed i didn't change that is a place you end up in a theater that the doctor tells you it is 50 50. when you don't take care you may not live and if you miss that place too that is why no suffering from the law is to destroy you every suffering the lord takes you through it's not even for you to come out as a happy or a soulful person it's for you to come out as a servant of god that is the process but sometimes when we are to take through all these things and then we refuse to understand the language of god that is the place of distraction so when the bible says for this call god gave them up it was the place of the first move where god stops talking to you where there is no feeling of sorrow anymore even when you sin that is why when you began to do certain things you felt bad there are people who would not even come to church because they did one or two things until later in their lives they realize that oh come on i can do it and go scot-free so they begin to do it master in it lie about it and then they see that ah, even if i do it i'm still alive he said for this cause he gave them up unto vile affection and when god gave them up this is what happens for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature homosexuality and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman bend in their own lust one toward another men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet why and even as they did not retain god in their knowledge god gave them over to a reprobate mind when god left them to a reprobate mind the bible says that they began to invent evil things disobedient to parents that means that when you see that someone is in sin you are looking directly at somebody who may be the holy spirit has given up on the person's mind when you see the results of all these things in a person so when you see that the leadership and the authorities of this world are fighting for legalization of homosexuality uh, and there is all kinds of inaffection and all kinds of unmerciful attitude and everything in the body of christ you should understand that we are getting to a place that God is washing his hands over our minds. The Bible calls it the reprobate mind. That is why when you correct somebody, even if you preach, somebody can say you are preaching against me. You are preaching against He is settled in his sin because God has given up by genesis chapter 3 when god told them that when you eat this food you will die they didn't understand the mystery of this death to god death is not six feet death is when he washes his hands so when eve ate the fruit and she was still alive she went to adam and said that this this tree will not kill us all. i have eaten it i'm alive really adam said are you sure anybody that touches it will die he said no i've eaten it but what they didn't know is that god washing his hands and walking away is equal to death by chapter four their son killed their son by chapter five 
there is all kinds of evil by chapter 6 demons are sleeping with women listen the most dangerous person when you look at somebody like this and you are talking and the person tell you this is not about God you are looking at a person whom God has lifted his hands of the person's mind they did not retain God in their knowledge that is why we have boastful people that is why we have a list that apostle paul wrote down if you see a human being who can say that this is not about god this is not a spiritual thing this is a mind matter this is a person the bible says that to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded when you look at somebody who can look at a drunkard and not see someone whom in nature is just a rebellious person but can see that this is someone God God may not give up on you but he may give up on your mind because one of the gifts he gave us was the gift of choices that is what makes it dangerous for us in our work with him God will not force you when it comes to your mind you present it to him and you tell him that Lord by your spirit have your way so Hebrews chapter 9 he is bringing a difference between the sacrifice of bulls and the sacrifice of Jesus and the verse 13 says that for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an high fire sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God he says that the blood of bulls could only sanctify your flesh the high priest will sacrifice a bull and then by reason of that sacrifice only your flesh is clean by the Lord so God forgives all the sins of your flesh for only a year and does not touch your mind so another year the whole nation sins again and then they go back to God by the ministry of the high priest and then God forgives them and every year, year after year year after year they will keep sinning and the high priest will keep making sacrifices why because every sacrifice had power by cleansing only the works of their flesh and the bible says that by the sacrifice of jesus through the eternal spirit of god through the eternal spirit of god please listen to me with 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 your heart he said that he's able to cleanse not only the flesh he's able to cleanse our conscience so through the sacrifice of jesus god factored in something very important that when jesus you come into jesus it is not just your flesh that is washed and cleansed and the sins forgiven if that happens you will sin again so the sacrifice of jesus went into by giving access to the holy spirit that he will work on our conscience and our minds so that he will solve the problem of the future sin Jesus didn't forgive you so that you keep sinning again the Bible says that if we willfully sin if we continue to sin only a judgment that will await us I am speaking to you from the depth of my heart this is the ministry of the Holy Spirit we have not yet understood the reason why you are a fornicator your mind is responsible the reason why you are able to speak in tongues and cry in church but you go back and you steal and you are in loggerheads and you are full of jealousy you are full of envy you are full of insult there is no peace in your heart there is bitterness in your heart your mind and the eternal spirit of God was given so that he will carry his tools and not just beautify our bodies so when jesus came on earth eh, he told them something important 
He said that you are like tombs. <laughs> the outward is beautiful and painted. But he said inside is full of stinking bones. He said that but when you clean the inside, the outward will be clean. So the agenda and the project of heaven was not just to come and beautify our body, was to enter into our mind. And the rejection God has rejected our minds and have brought us this far in life. He will assess our minds by his spirit, re-engineer our minds. And when our minds are re-engineered, holiness is a possibility. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to work on your mind and bring you to a place of genuine repentance that you are convicted in your heart so John chapter 16 Jesus said that when the spirit comes he will convict the world of sin he carries the ministry of conviction to work on your mind to a point that you know that this is wrong this is right 